In today's video, we're going to talk about another compositional technique. How to use foreground, middle ground, and background. And I've got one really simple technique that you can use every time to make your photos more interesting. Welcome to Nifty 50 Photographers. If you're new to this channel, I'm Richard Gill, I'm a professional photographer. And on here, I provide free photography tutorials, especially if you're a little bit older like me. Maybe you've lost a bit of hair or got some gray in it. If that sounds like you and you haven't subscribed already, please do so. You'll get lots of great tips on how to improve your photography, your composition, and get the most out of your camera. We're here in Lancaster today, and as you can see behind me, We've got a lovely view over the city. There's a bit of the uh, River Loon estuary in the middle ground there, and some of the Lake District Hills way in the distance in the haze there. So, how do we use foreground, middle ground, and background? So when you come across a scene like this, and you think, oh, I want to take a picture of that lovely view, you probably set your camera up so it's pretty level, and take a photograph something like this. Now, you can see that nice photo of the city, but actually it's a little bit boring. So how do we get that around that using the concept of foreground, middle ground and background? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is move a little bit further back. Because what I want to do is capture some of these features that are on the, uh, on the ground here to make my foreground more interesting and they're going to lead the viewer into the photo. So there's some nice little triangular shapes down here. And my killer tip for you is point your camera down a little bit. What I want to end up with is my horizon being uh, a third of the way down from the top because the sky isn't very interesting. And that will bring my middle ground between the top third and the next third below it. And then in the foreground, in the bottom third, I'm going to have these little details that are uh, on the floor here. So I'm going to reset this up now with a bit of the foreground in there just to give me a little bit more interest in the photo. And there's my new shot. I think you'll agree that that makes the photograph more interesting by including some of this detail in the foreground. So how would you use foreground, middle ground and background if you're taking something like a portrait? Well, today I've got my good friend Stefan, who's a video production cameraman and editor. So I'm going to use him as a guinea pig and I'm going to take an environmental portrait. So he's got all his gear on, so that's immediately telling us some of the story of what he does. And he lives in Lancaster. So we've got Lancaster City behind us and then in the very background, we've got the uh, sea and the hills of the Lake District in the haze there. And that's going to create our story. So I'm setting up my shot now to think about Stefan being in the foreground, the middle ground is going to be the city, and then the estuary and the hills are going to be the background. As it's a portrait, I'm going to be in portrait mode. And I want Stefan to fill quite a lot of the frame, so I've got him his head round about one-third up the frame. And there we go. So that's a couple of examples of how to take photographs with a foreground, middle ground and background. Nobody remembers a boring photo. And what makes it boring is having no depth to it. Remember photos are in 2D, so inherently they become flat. So how do we bring the interest in? And that's to bring in different layers and add depth to our photo. And that's the real secret of why we would put in the, the foreground element, to bring in that extra layer and give your photo some depth. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a like. That's what helps me to make more videos. Now what you should do next, if you don't know how well to use your camera and all the settings, I have a playlist that'll get you started and will take you right up to be able to use your camera in manual. So check that out. If you have other questions about your photography 
or how to use your camera, please put them in the comments too and I'll do my best to answer them. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.